So it's me, and it's buggered. It's official. So I've checked everything, and um, it doesn't work. Um, but I've been a bit naughty. I have bought a complete motor, inverter, charger, stack for um, a Nissan Leaf E+. Plus. So double the power. 217 PS. I did it. So I was going to upgrade the car anyway, but um, I bought the whole stack because I don't actually know what's wrong with this. I don't know whether it's the inverter, which is probably most likely. I don't know whether it's the motor. I noticed it's a big lump of metal. I think that would take quite a lot to get too hot. And this thing drove me home. So it's likely that something's gone wrong with the inverter. When it's cooled down, something's cracked or broken. I, I, I don't know. The heat cycles through it. And potentially the heat cycles through it because I was never cooling it. Might have been slowly damaging it anyway. It may never have overheated. It may just have been failing because I'd abused it. Um, so I'm going to put a much more powerful unit in. Um, now Dala has done this. Um, I've linked his channel below. He's done this in his Nissan Leaf. Um, and it looks fairly straightforward. Com complex part is the resolver offset. So the motors all come with slight different tolerances and there's a resolver offset that you have to program the inverter. Now Dala had to do that because his, uh, he replaced the inverter and not the motor. Now I'm gonna replace both. So I don't need to do the, do the offset, so that's fine. Um, and also, because I'm replacing them both, the wiring loom that fits the inverter to the motor is all the same, so that I can just use the new wiring loom that comes, I don't have to do much there. All it will be is the 12 volt and ground power supply to the inverter, I'll need to spline that into the car, and it should just work. Um, yeah, it's never gonna be that simple because I know the plumbing is a bit different. All my lovely plumbing that I've done for the cooling isn't gonna work, but um, this is video one. I'm gonna just make lots of little snippets as I go through this, but here's the car. All done, you know, yeah. I, but I'm gonna have to take it apart, which is completely drop the gearbox out, motor, inverter, everything, disconnect it all, engine mounts, um, and then plug in the new one. Um, wish me luck, I'll just keep popping back with another video when, uh, as I make progress. So I'm about, I don't know, two, three hours in, something like that, and pretty much emptied the car. Um, let me just come around here. I'll get my torch I can show. So here, there used to be a motor there. So there's the gearbox. Um, all the ancillary stuff is all just held up by some wire just off there. So I kind of got the pump, the water pump, the uh, vacuum pump for the brakes, and all the, obviously the high voltage wiring is just all out of the way. 12 volts is disconnected, high voltage is disconnected, so there's no chance of anything blowing up on me. Um, I think the biggest difficulty getting that out was... Um, just undoing the bolts really doing it when I put this in the motor was attached to the gearbox outside the car and I lifted it well, actually I, I inserted it all down uh, through the bonnet but I just wanted to, I didn't want to really take the gearbox out because oh, I don't know probably because I'm being lazy um, <laughs> to be fair but uh, I kind of wish I did to be honest because that was a bit of a faff to get it out and drop the motor down but if I come over here <clears throat> I've got the inverter which I think I've blown up and the motor, which I'm going to replace, just in case it's damaged, but I don't think it is. Um, but they've got a resolver offset. So the new inverter will have the correct resolver offset. Uh, a bit of coolant come out there. So here is my custom spline that I had made. So I don't know how to get it off at the moment. It's completely welded on there. Well, it's not welded, but it's just really, really solid. It spins, obviously. Um, that's my original adapter plate from the first RX-8 EV I made. And then there's the adapter plate on the adapter plate to make it work for the Nissan Leaf. I, I didn't create a new adapter plate to do both. I just kind of, uh, well, I didn't make it. I got, I gave the machine shop all the dimensions and the, and the hole positions and uh, they made it. Hence why this has got so many holes in it because it's had obviously, well, lots of EV motors connected to it. So there we go. I've got to get the spline off, get the adapter plate off. That's all then redundant. Get the new motor here put it all back on, put it under the car, lift it back into position, slot it in, and then just plug it all back in, to be honest. Um, I think the first test will be, back to me, the first test will just be getting it running, um, and then build on from there, get the cooling working, cooling, not gonna blow another one up, and um, all good. So yeah, that's been pretty, pretty successful, to be honest, but I guess I have taken apart two RX-8s from scratch, that's removed the motors a lot, 
and this will be my third EV. So I'm getting quite efficient, I guess, at, uh, at getting this stuff in and out. As you see, I've got my, uh, my uh, one ton crane there as well, helping lift stuff. I've got an axle stand under here that's just holding the gearbox up at the moment. So that's all good. Um, so there we go. Couple of two, three hours in, and uh, I'll do an update in a minute once I get the motor. I think the motor's arriving Monday, um, and it's Saturday at the moment. God knows when I'll publish this on YouTube, so these dates might mean nothing. But um, I'll do an update once the motor's here and, uh, and how I'm getting on. So yesterday was Sunday, and I took the adapter plates off the car. Can't remember if I've already updated on that, but uh, can't get the spline adapter off. Um, so I've bought a puller, quite a long puller, and um, hopefully I should be able to get that off. Because I need to put it on the very exciting new stuff that's arrived. Da, da, da. That is my E Plus stack in there. So it's really hot outside. I don't really want to leave it out in the sun. Don't know why. Maybe I'm a bit scared of things being hot now. <laughs> so I'm going to just unpackage that and get it in the garage. One E Plus stack. So the way I know this is the E Plus as well is serial number. This SN0A is an E+, plus. but more importantly, there are subtle differences. This cooling pipe here um, on the normal inverter, I say normal, on the, uh, on the inverter I was having, uh, comes out the side, comes out the side there. There's also around here, uh, aha, so here's the connector. So the E+, plus has this, well it's not the E+, plus, I think the, the new Nissan Leaf has the, um, uh, different connector there, the circular connector, so that'll be the 110 and the 150 kilowatt versions have a new connector. So I know it's definitely one of the newer ones. There's also a coolant temperature sensor, which is very apt. The uh, previous one didn't have that, so I need to find the CAN signals for that as well. But the serial number on the side is the giveaway for the E+. Um, so there we go. I could always put it in my uh, wife's uh, 110 kilowatt car, but I'm not going to. This is going to live in my RX-8 in there. So I'm just going to cover it up now. I didn't like it being covered in black tarpaulin. It's the hottest day ever today. So just going to put the sheet over it just to give it a little bit of cooling and um, it's too heavy to lift. I'll take it apart and get it inside. Hey, it's me again. So I'm going to call this part one, I think, and I'm going to make this the last section of this video. Apologies that I have the top on. I'll try and keep it clean, but it's too bloody hot to be wearing anything else. So I'm going to spin this round, and what have we got out here? La la la, I've taken it apart. So there is my new motor. Looks exactly the same and is exactly the same as the old one. Uh, I've just got my T-shirt on top at the moment to stop any debris falling in the uh, electrical connectors, which are there. So then over here I have the charger and I've just put that there to photograph because I'm going to put it on eBay for sale. And there's the gearbox from the new motor which I take off because I don't need it. And I managed to sell my last one for 800 quid <laughs> so I don't know if I'll get the same kind of money for that. Uh, my cat is thoroughly fed up because it's a million degrees. So that's the motor. Oh and over here of course is the new inverter. So that's perfect, kind of exactly as I expected with the new connectors I showed a minute ago and the different layout of the pipes. But good thing is I've got this pipe here, which is um, super flexible and goes into the new location, but it should reach to where my plumbing is. So I shouldn't have to do, that's my biggest worry, I have to re-plumb it, but um, shouldn't have to re-plumb much to be honest. Other than that, it looks pretty much the same as the other one. <laughs> so here we go. So there's the old motor, um, there's the old inverter, and just got to get the spline off. Um, I was hoping my Amazon Prime delivery would arrive today, but um, no, it's going to arrive tomorrow. So I'll get that pulled off and uh, get it put onto that one, get the rest of this bit sold, and I'll start putting it back together again. So as I say, I'm going to make this the um, end of part one, and uh, we'll do a part two, which will be uh, putting it all back into the car. Catch you later.